Hi, this is Dr. Rivera, and today I want to go over a little bit about drawing phylogenetic trees. So this is the tree that we looked at in class a couple weeks ago, and there are a couple of things that are a little bit weird about it. So first of all, I fixed the whole issue over here, the horse whale or dino branches being polytomic. So I fixed them a little bit and put them in an order. Um, so that we wouldn't have any polytomies. That just makes the tree easier to look at. The other thing is, is that there's no real time axis on here. So we've got fish coming out close to the base and then frogs coming out above them. We're gonna fix that on our tree as well. And then finally, we've got this amoeba here at the very, very base of the tree. We're gonna change this around by making our amoeba our outgroup. So we're actually gonna root this tree. We're gonna root it right there. So what I want to do to build this tree is I want to think about all of the relationships that I need to preserve. So if we start over here at the top where we've got our human and our chimp, these are sister species to each other. And so I'm going to make them this um, pink node right there. So this pink node right here is where we've got humans and chimps. And so I'm going to maintain that pink node and draw it right there. And I'm going to branch out from it. I'm just coloring it so it's a little bit easier to look at. Human and chimp. This is the exact same relationship that we see over here. I've just drawn it in a slightly different way. But humans and chimps are still a sister and they still share a common ancestor to the exclusion of everyone else on the tree. So if we go down from this node, we can see that the sister clade to this human chimp clade, represented by this pink node, the sister clade to this is the horse whale clade. That's right here. And the ancestor to humans, chimps, horses, and whales is this blue node right there. So I could draw this here as another branch point like that. And this dot, blue dot here, is equivalent to this blue dot here. So I'm going to preserve the relationship. So here we have our human chimp pink node. And then here we're going to have horse and whale group. Now horses and whales have their own relationship pattern. They're sisters to each other. So I'm going to make that light blue. So the ancestor to horses and whales is now going to be this light blue color. So horse and whale. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just moving my way down the tree, but I'm preserving all of these relationships. So each of the nodes are still the same. The nodes are still looking at the same relationships. So humans and chimps are still sisters. Horses and whales are still sisters. And the human chimp group is still the sister group to the horse whale group. So let's go down one further. Let's go to this ancestor here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This ancestor here will be the ancestors to all of the species that we already have on our skir tree and also to the birds and dinos. So I'm going to, whoop make another branch here and so this green dot is going to be the same as this green dot right over here they're going to show the same relationships it's the same ancestral species so i'm going to do bird and dino in yellow so it's the same thing as with horse and whale that they have their own sister relationship within the clade so here we go whoops I totally forgot that I had meant to make the dino branch really short since they're extinct. So if we want to have time on our tree, there we go. Here's bird, and then our dinos, which are all extinct except for the avian lineage. So now we have all the relationships from this green node up. We're going to go down one more to the frog node, and I'll do this one in pink. So this, this frog node is the branching point between the frogs and all of the other tetrapods. So now we're looking at all the tetrapods. 
and the tetrapods form a monophyletic clade. And the ancestor to all the tetrapods is right here. So the ancestor to all the tetrapods gave rise to the frogs and also gave rise to all of these other non-amphibian species. So now we're gonna look at an even bigger group. I'm going to mark the vertebrates in gray. So down here, we're gonna have a gray node. This gray dot is now the ancestor to all the vertebrates. And this gray dot is gonna give rise to this one particular fish. In this case, it's a coelacanth. Remember that fish are actually a paraphyletic group. So this one line does not show all of the diversity of fish. This one particular fish, the coelacanth, is gonna branch off here next to the tetrapods. So now we have the coelacanth as a sister group to all of the tetrapods, and that encompasses the vertebrates for our particular tree. Now I'm gonna go down to this dot here, this branch here. So this branching point here is going to be the branching point between the crustaceans and the vertebrates. So of course you will already know that there's a lot of diversity that is not represented on this particular tree. So we're just looking at a tiny bit of stuff. We've pruned off a lot of important branches. So here's our crustacean. And this dot here represents the ancestor of all of the vertebrates and the crustacean. So the last common ancestor of all of these animals, which would have been a very ancient animal. And then finally, we've got this right here, which is gonna be where we're rooting the tree. And so we're going to have amoebas be our outgroup. And we're gonna stick a root on the tree right where I stuck that little branch. So this is how you could draw a tree like this that's a pretty ugly tree that looks kind of like a ladder. We know that evolution does not work in a ladder-like progression. We know that a frog is not an ancestor to a whale. And so instead, we're going to make this nice square tree that depicts the information in a little bit more of a satisfactory way. So next, I want to look at what's going to happen if we want to really highlight the frogs. So we're gonna put the frogs at the very top of the tree, and we're gonna do that by rotating the nodes. Now, when we're looking at phylogenetic trees, we're allowed to rotate the nodes because we're not gonna change any relationships. So if I rotate around this pink node here, that's gonna bring the frog up to the top of my tree and all these other species here down, to, down to a little bit lower but it's not gonna change any of the relationships. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna erase this stuff over here. Oops, that is the wrong color eraser. All right, all erased. So now I'm going to make this tree with the frogs on the top. So first of all, I'm not gonna be changing any of these basally branching groups. So I'm going to keep the amoeba, I'm just going to write AM for now. I'm going to keep the crustaceans where they are, and I'm going to keep, oops, the fish where they are. What I am going to change is rotating of this node to make the frogs go up to the top of the tree and everybody else kind of go down to the bottom a little bit. So now this branch point here is going to still be this pink node. So but now instead of drawing the frogs coming out first, I'm going to draw everybody else coming out first. So I'm going to stick the frogs all the way at the top.
and everybody else down a little bit lower. It's going to make this look a little bit funky for now. Oops. Sorry, this one should say bird and dino. Whoop, there we go. Okay, so bird and dino. Then we've got our large group over here that's got human and chimp as the sisters. And then the sister to our ape group is going to be our horse whale group. So notice that even though I move things around, I'm still preserving all of the relationships. So this pink node is still going to be our <laughs> tetrapod ancestor. This green node is still going to be the ancestor of all of our non-amphibian tetrapods. This blue node is still going to be our mammalian ancestor. This yellow node is our bird dino reptile ancestor. Light blue is our horse whale ancestor. And then pink, hot pink, is our human chimp ancestor. So even though I've rotated the nodes, I have not changed the way that these organisms are related to each other. That's why we're allowed to rotate the nodes on our phylogenetic tree, because it doesn't change the relationships, it just changes the way that we're looking at the tree.